Hi, and welcome to the Arboretum Plant Information Daily Recap. I'm Frank McDonough, the Questionable Botanist, and I take your gardening, horticultural, and other questions here at the Arboretum and try to get answers for you. Uh, let's go over some couple of the nicest, juiciest, most interesting questions of the day. Uh, one of the interesting questions came right in this morning uh, in the hands of one of our clients and it looked terrible. I looked right there in her hands was this. Now that, that is, looks like a very bad three day old salad, doesn't it? That is a myoporum shrub and as you can see the leaves are curled up. They look awful. There's brown, dead parts to this thing. You have a lot of distortion in the leaves. What could this be? This is a relatively new pest. It's been here for about three to four years called the Myoporin thrip. And unfortunately, it has rendered the use of most Myoporums. Uh, it's n just nullified them. You can't use Myoporums now in, in landscaping and uh, it's kind of a, it's a double-edged sword. It's a mixed blessing. First off, myoporums were some of the best plants that you could use uh, for ground covers and shrubs, but several of them, including one of the shrubby myoporums, are also invasive. And the shrubby myoporum has been getting out into areas near the seacoast and um, becoming an invasive plant. So this pest has come and wiped out all but one or two species of the Myoporum, or is wiping out one or two species. So the question is, do you spend a lot of money to send an entomologist to Australia, where these are native, to find the, a wasp or other parasite that's gonna control this plant, or, or not? That's the question. Uh, I don't know if they decided to do that yet. I don't think so. But at any rate, there's not much you can do about this myoporum thrip except get rid of your myoporums and plant something that's resistant or ha doesn't have a problem with the thrip, which is basically anything that's not a myoporum. It's kind of sad to see such a useful plant go, but again, uh, generally, you can look at it as a blessing because of the fact that the myoporin thrip is also attacking invasive myoporums that are displacing native plants. So what do you do about this? Again, tear it out, throw it in your compost pile and forget about it. And I had another question and, uh, about This is a Woodwardia fern, chain fern, I do believe they're called. And one third of the lower fronds are turning yellow and dying. After a little bit of question and answer back and forth on email, I asked the owner of this plant, did she notice any black spots on the underside of the dying or dead leaves? Her answer was yes. Those black spots are spore sacs. When ferns sporulate, spores are their way of reproducing. Those spores are born in sacs. Those sacs are usually on the underside of the older leaves and once they've born spore sacs, those leaves die in the great majority of ferns. It's a natural thing. It usually happens around springtime. So if you see this happening to your fern, don't worry about it. It will recover. Finally, my last question. This question is from a retired gentleman in Goleta. He says he's a contract designer, consultant, and he's working with a group that uh, builds places of worship, and he's a volunteer and he does the landscaping. He wants to know if we have a list of plants that are good for xeriscaping or low water use. Well, no, we don't. 
we don't really have a list of plants because the list is always continuously being added to. But there are several books out there that have a, a good list of plants, and this is probably the best one, in my opinion. And that's Heidi Gildemeister's Mediterranean Gardening, a Waterwise Approach. You can purchase this off of Amazon.com, and I do believe you can also purchase this at our gift shop. Heidi Gildemeister's Mediterranean Garden, a Waterwise Approach. You know, the best the next thing to having an official list is this book. And again, we can't really make a list because there's always new plants being added to that list, new plants being uh, introduced from zeros low water use areas. In fact, the whole mission of the Arboretum for a long time was to introduce water-wise plants. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. This is Frank McDonough, the Questionable Botanist, botanical information co consultant here at the Arboretum.